Hello everyone, my name is Perry, and today I'll be presenting our paper, Self-Supervised Object Detection from Egocentric Videos. The goal of our method is to find the locations, boundaries, and pseudo-labels of objects and images without using any annotated data. And we want to achieve this um, in the context of the complex egocentric domain, which is quite different than regular benchmark datasets. Typical benchmark datasets are usually highly curated, scripted, and are object-centric, while egocentric videos are typically unscripted, showing natural occurring events in often dense and complex environments with many diverse objects in varying scales. This work is inspired by classical computational appearance methods such as BRDF and BTF. Loosely stating, these computational appearance methods capture the distribution of reflectance measurements of a given opaque surface from all possible viewing angles and illumination conditions at well-defined sampling structures. While these classical methods sort of specialize under expected structured and controlled conditions, real-world conditions present varying scales, textures, structures, and irregular surfaces. We don't know where the camera and light sources are, and we don't control their positions. To dive into the intuition of computational appearance, we look at the example of bidirectional reflectance distribution function, or BRDF for short. Given a surface, we know that reflectance responses at different view angles and illumination directions to exist within the BRDF of that surface. As an example on the left, a surface can be specular or diffuse depending on the viewing angles and illumination condition, but reflectance responses still remain within the BRDF of that surface. Translating this to deep learning models, we want to map all patches of the same surface or objects that lay within the distribution to have similar features using our computational appearance-based self-supervised objectives. So we require to view a given object from various viewing angles and illumination conditions. And for that, we leverage a natural human perception captured in egocentric videos to sample diverse views of the same object. As the human agent interacts with its surroundings, it views objects from different viewing angles and under different illumination conditions. And we can sample those views for our computational appearance-based objectives. So for this frame, on this example on the left, um, will be sampled into this point, and this frame will sample into this point, and so forth and so forth. And in the end, we want all the features of these views to be very similar to each other, despite of their difference in reflectance responses. Our method feeds multi-temporal inputs into a multi-scale deformal transformer network and selects anchor and positive patch matches based on our patch matching network output. We then select top n least similar patches as negative and a single positive per anchor. The next module to be added is the residual encoder layer. This module learns both cluster center and residual weights of patch inputs. The learned residuals are then used for our multi-view and scale regression loss functions. For inference, we follow multiple steps. We first perform per batch cluster smoothing on our learned clusters with respect to our batch features. Say we have a set of features, we can either directly assign them to our learned clusters, or we can optimize said learned clusters using expected maximization towards a given batch features to get better fitting predictions. As you can see, this operation allows us to reduce overall noise when assigning features to cluster centers and to generate cluster maps. And from there, we can directly predict the bounding boxes as follows. Given an image and pixel-wise prediction, we can apply the connected component algorithm on that prediction mask to get a set of blobs. We can then draw boxes around these blobs and score their boxes by the weighted harmonic mean of the convexity of that blob and its objectness to obtain the final boxes and scores. Here we present some qualitative and quantitative results of our method on egocentric data. You can see that we significantly outperform our baseline on Ego4D, which is highly complex egocentric dataset. And we're also quite competitive on Ego Object, uh, which is an object-centric egocentric dataset. And we achieve all these results in an end-to-end -end matter, significantly reducing the complexity of our pipeline. In this work, we also include an out-of-domain study, showing how our method performs on never seen third-person data without training on it at any time. Despite the unfavorable settings, our method still achieves competitive results compared to recent state-of-the-art methods. Notice that while not metrically taken into account, we're also able to distinguish objects from each other, producing consistent pseudo-label predictions for same object categories.